Welcome back to my uh, Instagram Live Apéro Hour. It is 6 p.m. here in Paris, so it's about time for a drink. Um, sorry I'm a little late uh, starting. I usually start at 6. Um, I just was reading on Instagram one of the people who works at Bon Appetit, uh, one of the editors, I believe, and uh, she was in the videos and was never compensated for anything. Um, and I believe she's Asian-American. I didn't... Um, look too deeply into your profile because I was trying to get onto here, but wow, it's quite a story. And um, to everybody uh, who works there, uh, wow, um, I don't know that much about what actually goes on day to day um, at the magazine, but I know what it's like to work with a bunch of people. And um, I used to work with all women and a lot of times um, you hear about women getting paid a lot less than men and I would have been completely shocked if the women that I worked next to were paid less than me for doing the exact same work. Um, in fact, I think the people who, the women I worked with were, were being paid more than I was, so, um, which is fine because they were there longer and they had more experience. So I don't, I'm not going to get too into that right now, but I just... It was in my head, and all of a sudden I was like, whoa. Uh, that was, it's interesting hearing uh, people's voices and seeing what's really going on in certain places. Uh, anyway, um, welcome back uh, to Instagram Live, uh, Apéro Hour. I'm very excited for today because this drink is very um, interesting to me that we're doing. It's going to be called, the, it's the Breakfast Martini, and I am going to... Um, to pin it um, just so that people who join later oh hello Brad uh, from Brooklyn and hi everyone in New York City and North Carolina Washington DC Toronto Tennessee Mississippi Massachusetts Franklin Vancouver if you want to freak out French people ask them to say Massachusetts <laughs> That's a, it's a long word. Um, I grew up near there, so I'm used to it. <laughs> it's a tough word um, for, for people that aren't Native American, Native English speakers, um, and it's fun to goof around with people. Um, so yesterday, it was funny because I went to the store near me called Au Bout de Champ, which means the end of the fields, I believe. And uh, they sell local produce. They sell, they, or not local, but they sell things from, direct from producers. Uh, local is a little difficult in Paris because there's not a lot of stuff nearby. Um, so um, things come from other parts of France, but they support local producers. And I asked, you know, there was one basket of raspberries left and I, or strawberries, and I said, how much are they? I'll take those. I didn't even ask how much they were. I said, I'll take those. And she said, oh, I'm going to give them to you. They're not in very good shape. And they're all actually perfect. So... <laughs> I didn't name the store because I wasn't sure if she was authorized to do that, but somebody left a comment when I posted it said, oh, you know, it must be nice to be famous and have people give you free things. And first of all, I'm not famous, especially in my neighborhood. Um, I'm just the, the guy who screws up French verbs. Um, but it was kind of funny. It was cute. Um, and today I went to buy strawberries at another place and I bought this lovely basket or this box or whatever you call it. And I didn't look at the price of everything. They weren't marked. When I got home, I looked and they were 12 euros, which is about $14. Um, they're very good, uh, you know, from a small producer. Um, and they're smaller, so they're hard to pick. So I think I averaged out my strawberries, uh, the price of the free strawberries with the price of the strawberries I actually bought. But it actually, there was a funny story. Um, when I wrote My Paris Kitchen, there was a recipe I had in the book. It was for the breakfast martini, the drink I'm doing today. And I had been invited to a fancy hotel in Paris, one of the very grand hotels. And the bartender, who was very well known, I guess, I didn't know who he was, but um, that's okay. Um, I live a very sheltered life. And so they invited me to the, his book party for his cocktail book. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll go. It's a fancy hotel, you know, free drinks, yay. <laughs> and I don't usually, you know, I get invited to certain things when you, you do that when you're, even if you have a blog or if you're whatever, a press journalist, um, writer. Um, and I got there and the publicists were very nice to me and they sat me at the bar. They said, oh, you should have, you sit here and we'll have them set you up. And I waited like 15 minutes for the bartender to come over. They weren't that busy to come over to me. 
Um, he didn't, so I said, excuse me, um, can I try one of the cocktails? And he kind of looked at me and then he sort of brought me one. Um, and then they brought me this beautiful plate of appetizers. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. They were all like this sculptures. He put it down and then he came back about five minutes, seconds later and took it away and brought it to somebody else. He probably made a mistake. Um, so, and actually now that I think about it, I probably didn't even get the cocktail. Um, anyhow, I noticed that they were giving out samples of cocktails um, on trays and I don't like free-for-alls of food, um, but I wanted to taste the cocktails. So I tried to um, have one and they kept like walking away from me. So I thought, well, they gave me his book and I thought, well, I'll just go up to the chef and who's was very good looking and say, you know, congratulations on your book. Would you mind signing it for me? You know, um, and I waited and he was surrounded by all these young women that were very attracted to him. Um, I guess, I don't know who they were, but um, I waited about four minutes and so I left. And I was very um, depressed actually because it's like, well, the whole idea of a book party is to be nice to everybody, to talk about your book, and to, you know, get, let people sample the food. So it's not always wonderful being invited or getting freebies. Um, it happened at another place once. I was on a book, uh, I guess I should stop rambling, but I was on a book deadline. I was very, very busy, and this shop was, this little restaurant was opening, um, and they served something I was kind of interested in, and they kept saying, you have to come, you have to come, you have to come. So I finally went. Um, to the book, to the restaurant opening, and I got to the door, and they go, "Who are you?" And I told the woman um, there with the notebook, and she goes, "Well, where are you placing your article?" And I was like, "Oh, uh, uh, I was like on my blog, um, you know, sixty thousand people a day." <laughs> and she was like, "Well, I don't know if we can let you." <laughs> so anyhow, <laughs> um, they finally let me in, um, but I didn't get served and. Um, I left after 20 minutes and the owner came sprinting after me. <laughs> so that was very interesting. So anyhow, it's not always fun in games. Um, I actually don't mind buying stuff because um, it's okay to buy stuff and support companies. Speaking of getting freebies though, um, today is sort of also greatest hits of a little bit of some of the last Instagram uh, lives I did. If you remember last week I had, I think it was last week or the week before, it was Pierre Olivier from Dolan Vermouth. And I was talking about his different vermouths. And I was making, I had made a drink called the El Presidente. And it's made with vermouth blanc or bianco vermouth, as you would say in Italian. And I picked up this bottle, which I'd had for about a year on the shelf. I hadn't opened it. And he looked at it and he goes, it's yellow. It's supposed to be clear. <laughs> so, so he sent me a new bottle to make up for mine that I had ignored. So, which was very nice to get a complimentary bottle of vermouth, uh, but they don't pay me to hold it up. I just, I like the vermouth. So I was gonna make a recipe, start off with a recipe um, for tomorrow. Um, when he was on my, when Pierre Olivier was on, we were talking about this liquor that Dolan Vermouth makes. And Dolan Vermouth is in the French Alps and they used to make, and they still do, a liquor, a strawberry liquor called Chambi, Chambéry Zette. Chambéry is the town where the vermouth is made. Chambéry Zette. He said, oh yeah, in Paris it was very fashionable to drink this liquor many years ago on the left bank. And, um, you know, nowadays it's kind of, you know, it's, a, it's, it's they say in French, oublié. It's sort of a forgotten liqueur. So I'm going to make it on the distributor's website or on their Facebook page, Haus Alpens. They actually had the formula for making the Chambéry Zette. And I know that many of you probably can't get Chambéry Zette either. I would not know where to get it in Paris, except for they have it at Les Caves de Roy, R-O-Y. Um, so I just saw it there the other day when I was going to buy uh, bitters. I bought these Sue's bitters, which are kind of interesting. Um, it's made with uh, gentian and uh, muscad is nutmeg and anise. So I was hoping to use those this week before I before we all uh, depart, before we scatter. So to make this uh, strawberry, I guess you call it a liqueur. Um, it's not really a liqueur. Um, I guess it could be aperitif. How's that? Um, you basically want to take, some, and this is a good use if your if your white vermouth has turned a little golden. Um, make sure it's not oxidized. I just opened this last week, so it tastes fine. It's just. Uh, um, you know, the color changed a bit. A uh, white vermouth is different than dry vermouth. 
uh, white vermouth is sweeter and dry vermouth is not. So uh, usually use a dry vermouth in a martini. You could use dry vermouth for this as well. This isn't as common, <clears throat> especially in the US, this brand Dolan, uh, uh, white vermouth. Uh, you can find it, but you can also use another kind of vermouth. Although if Jean, if Pierre Olivier is watching, I think so. <laughs> he's very nice to come. And another thing, I have so many things. This is since this is the last week, I'm trying to get everything in. Uh, these are the these are measuring cups, and I, I've had these for probably, uh, and I'm not even kidding, uh, thirty years. Uh, we used to use these at Chez Panisse, and they were there when I got there. Um, started these measuring, they had these measuring cups. I don't know where they got them from, um, but a couple times I found, I used to go to thrift stores all the time and I would find them for like 10 cents, so I bought them and actually brought them to Paris with me. And all these people hate measuring cups and they say, you should weigh everything, weigh everything, weigh everything. It's like, well, these measuring cups are so special to me, I can't let them go. So, um, and weighing is great too, unless the battery for your scale dies in the middle of a baking project and it's four in the morning and you can't use it. So measuring cups are very good too. A lot of very good bakers use measuring cups. Um, a lot use scales. We're all different. So this recipe is very easy. Um, first thing to do is find the jar that you're gonna, find a big jar that'll hold about two cups. And you're gonna pour in 375 milliliters of white vermouth. And that is about one and two thirds of a cup. And you don't need to be super exact. It's not a big deal. Aha. You don't have to be you know, perfect. It's actually, it's better not to be perfect in anything. <laughs> it's good to have flaws. That's what makes people interesting. So I'm gonna take, uh, the recipe says, and I was all set to go, uh, six to eight strawberries. It didn't quite say what size, but I'm just gonna grab, uh, I'm gonna go with eight, cause these are kind of small. And I'm gonna rinse them quick, even though they aren't organic. And I'm gonna grab a cutting board. You have to excuse me for a moment. <laughs> See, I got caught up in that article right before I started. So, so you just want to hold them and quarter them. Oops, stop turning. I won't talk anymore about Bon Appetit. <laughs> it's a lot. It was interesting because I don't re use Twitter that much. Um, I I use it to answer questions and people write me something. It's very quick and easy to respond. Um, I don't really look at it too much, but I started looking. You know, a friend of mine was talking about all these articles and all these streams and so forth, and people were talking about stuff. So I started reading these threads, and it was just like, wow, um, it's pretty intense. It was a lot of people very angry about things, which anger's okay. Um, but I was wondering how, um, how effective that, venting your anger on Twitter is versus um, some other way. Maybe it's the right thing to do, I don't know. I just don't use Twitter that way. So. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up. So, I'm gonna put the, just quarter the strawberries, put them in the vermouth, no sugar, because vermouth is made with uh, it's usually like 20 or 25 different aromatics in there. Often there's things like wormwood or citrus peel, uh, orange peel perhaps, uh, saffron sometimes is in vermouth. Um, so you've already got this whole base of flavors. And in uh, Drinking French, I do have a recipe for liqueur de fraise, which has strawberries in it. 
um, which is quite nice too. That keeps a long time because it's just vodka and it's really pretty. Um, that's higher alcohol. The higher the alcohol in your base, the more the flavors get extracted. Alcohol is a very, very good base for extraction. So I'm just gonna sort of give this a shake and let this sit overnight for, they said 24 hours, so I'll see you in 23 and a half hours. So we'll see this back. I hope they, I'll probably get up in the middle of the night and look at it. So the breakfast martini, and it's, it's gonna say, whoops. I like hitting this little button. Okay, so the breakfast martini. I don't know why it's called the breakfast martini. I do not recommend drinking in the morning. Um, once in a while, I think I used to have like a Bloody Mary on Sunday or whatever when I lived in California for brunch, but I'm not a big morning drinker. I don't recommend it. But I think it got its name because it has a little bit of orange marmalade in the drink, that's the base. This is some marmalade that I made. It's citron orange, blood orange. And I love to make jam. I have a lot of jam here. And if, if anybody out there lives with a Frenchman, they know that they can eat a lot of jam. It's like, um, once I mentioned that on my blog on one of the recipes, um, that Roman eats tons of jam. And a couple people said, yeah, my boyfriend and my husband is, it's like the amount of jam that they eat is incredible, um, which is charming. Um, I think it's really sweet. So I've got my muddler. So I put the marmalade, I used one teaspoon of orange marmalade in the shaker. And then I'm gonna add some lemon juice. So we had a, some votes. People want it for what Roman's going to make on Saturday. Um, he's going to be here. And I had thought maybe we'd go to combat the bar because Margot has been, she's one of the greatest hits guests as well, like Pierre Olivier. Um, she was actually, she's the only person that was on twice because I like her so much. Um, and she's a lot of fun. And her bar is open. Maybe we should do a live remote from combat instead. Um, instead of here. And some people thought maybe they wanted to see Roman make a Caesar salad, which is um, usually not a specialty in France. Um, they usually put all sorts of things on it, like shrimp or corn or rice or you know, all sorts of things sometimes. But Roman, I've taught him how to make it. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna muddle this. If you don't have a muddler, oops, with the lemon juice. You can use a spoon, a soup spoon, and just mash it or fork, mash it against the side. They just want it to be very liquefied. Let's see if I can do this without tumbling you into the... How's that? All right. It probably looks weird from that angle. So I've got a half, a, half an ounce of fresh lemon juice. I'm going to put half an ounce of dry curacao or triple sec. And this is from Pierre Ferrand. I had Alexander Gabriel on, um, who's the distiller who makes this, and his wife. If I can find my jigger, which is right in front of me. So you could use another orange liqueur. You could use Grand Marnier. You could use Cointreau. Um, I happen to like this quite a bit. Um, so I use this. It almost smells like orange marmalade. Okay. And last greatest hits is was Miko and Ian from Odemus uh, Pink. He make Odemus Spirits to make this pink pepper gin, and I'm gonna use this in the martini because it's very uh, junipery. It's got some tonka bean in it as well, which is why they don't sell it in the United States. But he's looking for a distributor, so um, at some point. I could probably get some, make, pick up some money on the side, bringing things to the U.S. for people, but um, I'll only do it if someone will pick me up at the airport. So, once again, I got one and three quarters ounces of gin, dry gin. I like dry gin, lemon juice, uh, orange liquor, uh, three half ounce of 
half ounce each of lemon juice, half ounce of orange liqueur. All right. Voilà. So, and you get some ice. And yesterday was a very exciting day because my refrigerator, I had to unplug it and defrost the whole thing for two days. Um, so I didn't have any ice. I didn't have my refrigerator. I brought all my stuff to my neighbors who has an extra, well, they have a refrigerator that don't have much stuff in it. Um, so now it's back, but he told me you, you need to defrost this refrigerator every six months. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, it's 2020. Um, I was trying to use a decorative bowl rather than have me I'm getting new ice. So fill the shaker about three quarters full of ice and give it a super good shake. Um, I've mentioned this before, some people do this. And then they pour, you really need to shake it because you want, especially when you have a martini, you want to dilute it. You want to dilute that gin. When Robert Simonson was on, he talked about um, a place, uh, Robert wrote a wonderful book called The Martini Book. And he talked about a place in England, in London, where they do not dilute the ingredients in a martini. And he goes, I had one and I was completely smashed. Um, and he's a professional drinker because that's what he does for a living. So you do want to have some dilution. That's why you shake and stir cocktails. So I'm going to grab a twist of orange. Maybe on the last day instead of Roman, or we could do it Sunday, uh, I could do a big Zoom and have everybody who is on the Instagram lives these, these shows. How would that be? I hope anybody who's a Schitt's Creek fan, I've started watching it. Um, they had a great Zoom. Um, they all got together and they sang um, a song and Mariah Carey showed up. Because she's a fan of the show. And the great thing about the little bit of orange marmalade, orange marmalade is usually made from sour or bitter oranges. So this gives the gives the drink sort of a, a little bitter uh, aftertaste, which is wonderful. I love bitter flavors. But I made this little twist that I, I trimmed, and you can make a twisty twist if you want. And there you go. Oops. You don't have to see the used cutting board. But this is the breakfast martini. And it probably would be good. I realized I, the recipe is on my blog. I have a picture of it with a croissant because qu people like to click on pictures of croissants. Mmm. <laughs> I haven't had that in a while. Um, it's really good. It's very fruity. Um, it's not, you know, a martini can be anything. If you're used to a martini with just vermouth, that's a martini. Of course, now there's espresso martinis and so forth. But this is very good. The nice thing about it too, mm, I have an interview, another Instagram live after this with somebody else. So I'm not gonna drink too much, but it's quite good. It's delicious. I will have another sip. It's like yesterday, all the uh, peanuts I ate, I did those candied peanuts and candied almonds. And I did three batches. I did two with you folks and then one before just to have some. And I think they're almost all gone except for half a jar. So Roman and I have been eating them a lot. Um, because it's Paris, Parisians love cherry tomatoes with a, with a drink. So it's a perfect thing to serve with your breakfast martini, but you can serve it in, in, in the afternoon. It's 626 here now. Yeah. Mm. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be on somebody else's Instagram live this evening, or depending on if you're in California, it's, a, it's the morning. If you're in New York, it's afternoon. You're probably having lunch. 
um, I know you're coming out of confinement in New York, but I'm going to be on my friend, uh, with my friend, um, and I, it's funny to have a friend whose name you can't pronounce, but it's, his name is Jan Hendrik van der West, Westhusen. Uh, he lives in Nice. He has a restaurant called Jan, which is very famous. It has a Michelin star, at least one. I'm not sure if it has several. But he's a very interesting fellow. Uh, and he asked me to be on his Instagram Live. So in 30 minutes, I will be on his Instagram Live, which is 7 p.m. here. So you can take a break from me. Go read um, about Bon Appetit stuff uh, if you want. Um, if you go to my Instagram stories, I shared the, the, the thread I was reading by um, one of the women who was in the videos who wasn't paid. Um, we'll probably be hearing more of those. Uh, bon Appetit dish, did issue a big apology today, I think, or yesterday. Somebody sent it to me. Um, so let's hope that they make some some positive changes. I remember when the magazine, uh, very when the old days of Gourmet, um, I even wrote for them a few times, and they were really... Um, really particular about making sure the recipes work. They had a really good test kitchen, um, but they had very strong, um, this is, it was a whole different magazine then. So maybe we'll see another magazine soon from them that's completely different and inclusive and pays people who are, um, who are in their videos. Um, so anyway, <laughs> on that note, I will see you back tomorrow. I hope that this is already looking nice and red. Um, I'm gonna give it a sniff. Mm. So I can already smell it. Um, I, it is good to use good, where it's, it's hard, I know, and especially if you live in the US, it's hard to get uh, strawberries sometimes because a lot of strawberries are made, are grown by one particular company and those are what you find easily in the supermarkets and you see them all year. Um, and that's all you can get, which is sad, but unfortunately, um, that's the situation. However, most, you know, people write to me, they go, why can't we get these beautiful strawberries like you get? Um, and they're writing me from like New York or San Francisco or Los Angeles. I'm like, you have amazing farmer's markets. And I know in the U.S. they have really good farmer's markets everywhere now, which is really a wonderful change that's happened in America over the last 20 or so years. So in my book, there is a recipe to make this, to make a liqueur de fraise, and it was the most controversial picture in the book. Um, I got outvoted, but anyway, if you don't have a copy of my book, uh, feel free to pick one up at your local independent bookseller. There's also links on my blog and elsewhere to bookshop.com. Bookshop.org is a independent bookseller sort of um, clearinghouse, or they, they they represent a lot of independent booksellers and they discount books. Um, Book Larder, Omnivore, RJ Julia, a lot of bookstores have it. Um, you can also get it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble, I believe, has autographed copies. If you wanted autographed copies. Now serving LA. Um, sorry if I missed saying a lot of the bookstores because there's so many great bookstores that it's hard to, books are magic. Uh, Strand in New York. Um, wow, I could just stay here and talk about independent bookstores, but um, this is my book and I love it. I had a talk with a, a French person the other day who goes, I bought your book. It's so good. He owns a cider place. And I was, I was so I'm always touched when French people like it because um, it's their, you know, it's, I mean, I'm part of the culture as well, but it's nice to be recognized and get free strawberries once in a while. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, I better end it. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this will be, if you have any comments, uh, feel free to leave them when I post this on Instagram or Facebook. All right, so, uh, and if you're still around and you want to see more of me, um, in 30 minutes I'll be on Jan Hendrik van der Westhusen's Instagram Live, talking about cooking in Paris and Nice as well, because he's down in Nice. All right, bye-bye.